Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model M20 Scrubber Sweeper. Not only will your machine's highly efficient cleaning systems perform well the day you receive it, but for a long time to come. This operator training video will be presented in sections. Safety. How the scrubbing and the wet sweeping systems work together. How the dry sweeping systems work. Controls and instrumentation. Pre-operational checks. Preparing to clean. Cleaning. And draining and cleaning. It is the operator's responsibility to operate the machine safely. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. Your machine can effectively scrub and wet sweep or dry sweep dirty floors. The one step scrub button makes it possible to immediately begin scrubbing and wet sweeping with the activation of a single button. As the machine travels forward or backward, the desired amount of water and detergent is automatically regulated and distributed to the floor. The brushes use the detergent and water solution to scrub the floor clean as they throw debris into the hopper. When traveling forward, the squeegee wipes the dirty solution from the floor while the scrub vacuum fan draws the dirty solution collected by the squeegee off of the floor and into the recovery tank. The one-step sweep button makes it possible to immediately begin dry sweeping with the activation of a single button. As the machine travels forward or backward, the brushes sweep the debris from the floor into the hopper. A separate sweep vacuum fan draws airborne dust through a highly efficient pleated synthetic dust filter and clean air is exhausted. The machine can be easily operated with the activation of a single button. The key switch is used to start and stop the engine. If your machine is equipped with a diesel engine, you should turn the key switch to the left and hold it to preheat the glow plugs. Once the glow plug indicator light on the dash panel turns off, you have preheated the glow plugs and the engine can be started as shown before. The steering wheel can be adjusted for operator comfort. Pull up on the adjustment T handle and position the steering wheel. The horn button is placed in the center of the steering wheel for easy access. There are four indicator lights in front of the operator. The charging system indicator will illuminate if there is a charging system problem. On diesel engine equipped machines, there is a glow plug indicator that illuminates when the key switch is turned counterclockwise and the glow plugs are energized. The engine oil pressure indicator will illuminate if the engine oil pressure is below the safe operating range. The engine management system will automatically shut down the engine and record a check engine fault if this condition persists. Turn off your machine and contact a qualified service person. The check engine indicator will illuminate if an engine problem is detected. If the check engine indicator illuminates while the engine is running, turn off your machine and contact a qualified service person. If your machine is equipped with the optional spray pumping system, there is a switch that controls the spray. The headlights, taillights, and the optional revolving or flashing light are controlled by a switch on the dash panel. Press the top of the switch to turn on the headlights and taillights. Place the switch in the middle position to turn off all lights. Press the bottom of the switch to turn on the headlights, taillights, and the optional warning light. In the upper portion of the operator's control panel is a liquid crystal display, or LCD. The fuel level is displayed on the left side of this LCD. The fuel indicator consists of a series of indicator bars located between digits 0 and 1. As fuel is depleted from the tank, the bars disappear from the display until no bars are showing, indicating that the fuel tank is near empty. Refill the gasoline or diesel fuel tank as soon as possible when there is only one bar left on the indicator. If your machine is a liquid propane gas-fueled engine, the message F10 Low Fuel is displayed on the LCD when the fuel tank is low. When this message is displayed, replace the LPG tank immediately. In the same LCD, the machine hour meter is displayed. The hour meter records the total number of hours the machine has been operating. This information is useful for scheduling service of the machine. If a condition exists that the operator needs to be aware of, 
and audible chime sounds to alert the operator to view the message displayed in the LCD window. A red light-emitting diode, or LED, located next to the LCD display will also flash. On the left side of the operator's control panel are five code entry and machine setup access buttons. The engine speed can be controlled with the engine RPM switch. Pressing the switch once will increase the engine RPM. Pressing it again reduces the speed. When either the one-step scrub or sweep button is pressed, the engine RPM automatically increases. There are two rocker switches located to the left of the operator. The rocker switch on the left is the hopper raise and lower control switch. Note, before raising the hopper, be aware that the ceiling height needed is 96 inches or approximately 2.5 meters. To raise the hopper, press and hold the top of the hopper up-down rocker switch. Warning. When working around or under a raised hopper, engage the hopper safety pin. To lower the hopper, remove the hopper support pin, then press and hold the bottom of the hopper up-down rocker switch. The rocker switch on the right is the hopper door open and close switch. You can press the lower half of the hopper door open close switch to open the hopper door. Press the upper half of the hopper door open close switch to close the hopper door. However, the hopper door will close automatically as the hopper is lowered. Note, when you turn on the cleaning systems, the hopper door automatically opens. It automatically closes when you turn off the cleaning systems. The machine direction of travel and propel speed is controlled by a foot pedal. Press on the top of the foot pedal to propel the machine forward. Press the bottom of the foot pedal to propel the machine in reverse. The further you press the pedal in either direction, the faster the machine propels. Remove your foot from the pedal and the machine will stop propelling. The pedal to the left of the propelling pedal is the brake pedal. Depress the brake pedal to stop the machine. To set the parking brake with the brake pedal depressed, press down on the toe pedal and remove your foot from the brake pedal. To release the parking brake, depress and release the brake pedal again. Your machine can dry sweep or scrub and wet sweep, so there are separate controls for each operation. So let's explore the sweeping system controls first. Your machine is designed to dry sweep and control dust when you press the one step sweep button. When the one step sweep button is pressed, the LED near the button will illuminate. The sweeping system vacuum fan will automatically turn on and the vacuum fan LED will illuminate. When the one step sweep button is pressed again to turn off the sweeping systems, the light next to the one step sweep button turns off and sweeping functions stop after a short delay. The sweeping dust control filter is equipped with a shaker that cleans the filter and provides excellent dust control. If this filter is clogged, a warning fault is displayed and the operator should activate the shaker system to clean the filter. When you press the filter shaker button, the sweep vacuum fan temporarily turns off and the system shakes for 30 seconds. Whenever the sweep system is turned off, the shaker system will automatically shake for a shorter 10 second period. When wet sweeping and scrubbing, the sweep vacuum fan is not activated by the machine. Before we explore the scrubbing controls and instruments, we would like to explain the scrubbing capabilities of your machine. There are three scrubbing options, conventional mode, the optional fast mode, or the optional extended scrub mode. All M20 configurations will scrub in conventional mode. All M20 configurations can be equipped with either the optional fast system or the optional extended scrub system, but not both. Note, in all scrubbing modes, travel speed and floor conditions will affect scrubbing performance. Conventional mode scrubbing controls and instrumentation. Pressing the one-step scrub button enables the machine to scrub in the conventional mode, which regulates the amount of solution delivered to the floor. In all scrubbing modes, the scrubbing brush pressure can be set to match conditions. With the one-step scrub button on, press either the brush pressure increase, 
plus button or the brush pressure decrease minus button to set the desired scrubbing pressure for the surface being cleaned. Under normal scrubbing conditions, set the brush pressure to the minimum setting required. Under heavier scrubbing conditions, set the brush pressure to the middle or maximum pressure setting. The machine defaults to the most recent settings used each time it is started. In all scrubbing modes, the solution flow rate can be set to match the conditions. With the one-step scrub button on, you can adjust the solution flow rate by pressing either the solution increase plus button or solution decrease minus button. This way you can set the solution flow level for your scrubbing conditions. Under normal scrubbing conditions adjust the solution flow level to the lowest setting required. Under heavy scrubbing conditions adjust the solution flow level to the higher settings with either the bottom and middle lights illuminated or bottom, middle and top lights illuminated. For heavily soiled areas you can use a scrubbing method called double scrubbing. Press the one step scrub button and then the vacuum fan squeegee button. The light above the vacuum fan squeegee button will turn off, the squeegee will raise and the vacuum fan will stop operating. Scrub the area requiring double scrubbing. Let the cleaning solution set on the floor for three to five minutes. Press the vacuum fan squeegee button again to lower the rear squeegee and turn on the vacuum fan. Scrub the floor a second time to pick up the cleaning solution. When scrubbing the area a second time, added solution is not needed so you can turn off solution flow by repeatedly pressing the solution decrease minus button until all lights above the button are off. As you scrub with your M20, the solution tank level and the recovery tank level are monitored. A message is displayed in the LCD panel if the solution tank is low or the recovery tank is full. The message, F6 Sole Tank E, means that the solution tank is empty. Refill the solution tank with the appropriate mixture of water and cleaning solution when the solution tank indicator is lit. The message, F7 Rec Tank Full is displayed when the recovery tank is full. When this message appears, the scrub functions will automatically turn off. Drain the recovery tank as soon as possible after the recovery tank indicator is lit. The indicator light will remain on until after the tank is drained and one of the panel buttons is activated. In either case, you can press the one step scrub button for an additional minute of operation to pick up standing water or solution. Optional fast mode scrubbing controls and instrumentation. Fast scrubbing technology offers the advantages of using less water and detergent than conventional scrubbing. The operator will be able to scrub more area per tank of water using less detergent. This technology also provides the advantage of leaving a drier and safer floor surface. Unlike conventional scrubbing, the optional foam scrubbing technology, or fast mode, operates by injecting the fast pack detergent concentrate into the system with a small amount of water and air. There is no need to mix detergent with the water in the solution tank because the fast technology provides meter detergent and water delivery to the scrubbing systems. The fast mixture creates a large volume of expanded wet foam. The expanded foam mixture is dispersed onto the floor while the machine is scrubbing. When the squeegee picks up the mixture, the patented foaming agent has collapsed and is recovered into the recovery tank. The fast system can be used with all double scrubbing and heavy duty scrubbing applications. Pressing the fast button enables the fast system to come on when the one step scrub button is turned on. If the machine is turned off with the fast system activated, the machine defaults to this setting the next time it is started. The extended scrub or ES mode provides an economical method for scrubbing floors. The ES system recycles recovered solution from the recovery tank through a filtration system and transfers it back into the solution tank for reuse. As the solution is reused, detergent is injected into the solution to maintain a consistent concentration and improve cleaning ability. If your machine is equipped with the ES system, pressing the ES button turns the ES system on and off. 
The machine will default to the ES setting the next time the machine is started if the machine is shut off while in the ES mode. If the ES system is active, the solution is recycled automatically whenever enough solution is detected in the recovery tank. When operating in ES mode and the bottom solution flow light is illuminated, the flow rate is low, without detergent. When the middle light is on, the flow rate is low, with detergent. When the top light is on, the flow rate is high, with detergent. Your M20 can also be used to pick up water or non-flammable liquid spills without scrubbing. Be sure the one-step scrub button is not activated. Warning! Do not pick up flammable materials or reactive metals that can cause an explosion or fire. Press the vacuum fan squeegee button. The light above the vacuum fan squeegee button will turn on, the squeegee will lower, and the vacuum fan will start operating. Next, drive the machine over the non-flammable liquid spill to pick it up. Before cleaning with your machine, there are a few pre-operational checks that need to be done to confirm your machine is ready to be used. Check the hydraulic fluid level. Check the fuel level. Check the condition of the main brushes. Remove any string, banding, plastic wrap, or other debris wrapped around the brushes. Check the main brush compartment right hand skirt and squeegee for damage and wear. Check the optional side scrubbing brush or sweeping brush. Remove any string, banding, plastic wrap or other debris wrapped around the brush. Check the condition of the side brush skirt or squeegee. Confirm the radiator and hydraulic cooler fins are clean. Check the engine coolant level. Check the engine oil level. Check the main brush compartment left hand skirt and squeegee for damage and wear. Check the left solution tank cover seal for damage and wear. Check the recovery tank cover seal for damage and wear. Confirm the vacuum fan screen is clean. Confirm the optional ES filter is clean. Confirm the recovery tank is drained and clean. Check the right solution tank cover seal for damage and wear. Check the condition of the hopper dust filter and clean as required. Check the hopper dust filter seals for damage and wear. Check the vacuum hoses for debris or blockage. Check the squeegees for damage and wear.
Check the optional fast pack detergent concentrate level and replace as needed. Ensure all conventional cleaning agents are drained and rinsed from the solution tank. Note, when fast scrubbing, ensure the solution tank is filled with clear, cool water only. Check the headlights, tail lights, and safety lights. Check the steering and brakes for proper operation. Check the service records to determine maintenance requirements. Depending on your machine configurations, before scrubbing you will need to determine which scrubbing option to use. This will help you properly prepare your machine for scrubbing. To prepare to use your machine in conventional scrubbing mode, drive the machine to the filling site, shut off the engine, and set the parking brake. Open either the left or right solution tank fill cover and partially fill the solution tank with water not to exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour detergent into the solution tank or use an automatic detergent metering system. For safety, when using your machine, follow the mixing and handling instructions on chemical containers. Attention! For conventional scrubbing, only use recommended cleaning detergents. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. Fill the solution tank with water until the level is just below the indicator tab. Warning: Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in tanks. To prepare to operate your machine in the optional fast mode, fill the solution tank with only clean, cool water at a temperature of less than 21 degrees centigrade or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Note. Do not use hot water or add any conventional floor cleaning detergents, or fast system failure may result. Next, confirm the fast pack detergent concentrate package on the machine contains sufficient cleaning agent. If the fast pack requires replacing, open the side access door and adjust the operator's seat completely forward. Squeeze the fast supply hose connector button and disconnect the fast pack hose from the fast supply hose. Remove the empty fast pack from the bracket and discard the empty fast pack. Remove the perforated knockouts from the new fast pack carton, but do not remove the bag from the carton. Pull the hose connector out from the bottom of the bag and remove the hose cap from the connector. Note: The fast pack floor cleaning concentrate is specially designed for use with the fast scrubbing system. Never use a substitute cleaning solution. Other cleaning solutions will cause unsatisfactory cleaning results. Connect the fast supply hose to the fast pack hose connector and slide the new fast pack into the fast pack bracket. After replacing an empty fast pack, scrub with the fast system for a few minutes to allow the cleaning agent to reach maximum foaming. Note: When the fast pack is not installed, plug the supply hose connector into the storage plug to prevent the hose from clogging. To prepare your machine for fast mode scrubbing after it has been used in conventional scrubbing mode, Drain, rinse, and refill the solution tank with clear, cool water before scrubbing in fast mode. To prepare to use your machine in the optional Extended Scrub or ES mode, drive the machine to the filling site, shut off the engine, and set the parking brake. If you're using the optional Auto Fill system, connect the hose from your water source to the Auto Fill connection on the machine. Turn the ignition switch to the on position and turn on the water source. Note. The water used cannot exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The autofill system will fill both the solution tank and recovery tanks to the proper level and then stop the filling process. If you're not using the autofill system, open either the left and or right solution tank fill cover and completely fill the solution tank with water. Open the recovery tank cover and fill the recovery tank with water until the tank is about half full. Note, if not using the ES system, do not add water to the recovery tank. 
Fill the detergent tank with the recommended detergent. Attention! For ES scrubbing, only use the recommended clean detergents in your machine. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty and cause unsatisfactory cleaning results. The amount and type of soilage play an important role in determining the type of brushes to use on your machine. For best results, use the correct brush type for your cleaning application. For maximum brush life and best performance, rotate the brushes front to rear after every 50 hours of operation. The brushes require replacing if the remaining brush bristles measure 15 millimeters or one half inch in length. Always replace the brushes in sets to prevent one scrub brush from scrubbing more aggressively than the other. To change the main brushes, first stop the machine on a level surface and make sure the scrub head is in the raised position. Next, turn off the machine and set the parking brake. Open the driver compartment side squeegee door to access the rear brush. Next, unlock the idler door handle, twist the handle counterclockwise, and open the idler door. Firmly grasp the brush idler plate handle and pull the brush idler plate from the scrub head. Then, pull the brush down and out of the scrub head. Slide the new brush onto the drive motor hub. Reinstall the brush idler plate onto the scrub head. Close the idler door, twist the idler door handle clockwise, and push the handle down to lock the idler door shut. Close the squeegee door and confirm it is latched. To replace the front brush, repeat this procedure on the other side of the machine. The optional side brush provides a wider sweeping or scrubbing path and allows you to clean next to walls and racks. The side brush can be either a sweeping brush for dry sweeping or a scrubbing brush for wet sweeping and scrubbing. To change the side brush, first stop the machine, raise the side brush, set the parking brake, and turn off the machine. Next, manually spin the brush until the spring handles are visible through the opening on top of the side brush assembly. Reach through the access hole in the side brush guard and the hole on top of the side brush assembly, squeeze the spring handles, and let the side brush drop to the floor. Remove the side brush from underneath the side brush assembly. Place the new side brush underneath the side brush assembly and lift the side brush up onto the side brush hub until the brush locks onto the hub. Rotating or changing the rear squeegees. If only the rear squeegee requires rotation or replacement, stop the machine on a level surface, set the parking brake, and raise the hopper about halfway up. Next, turn off the machine and insert the hopper safety pin into the hopper safety support tube and unlatch the rear squeegee retainer and swing the retainer band off to the side. Remove and rotate or replace the rear squeegee on the squeegee alignment tabs. Swing the squeegee retainer band onto the squeegee, secure the latch, remove the safety pin from the hopper safety support tube, start your machine, and lower the hopper. If the front squeegee also requires rotation or replacement, you will need to remove the squeegee assembly from the machine. To remove the squeegee assembly from your machine, disconnect the vacuum hose and loosen both squeegee assembly retainer knobs. Next, lift the entire assembly off of the machine and loosen the front squeegee retaining band latch. Swing the retaining band away from the rear squeegee assembly to gain access to the front squeegee. Install the new front squeegee blade or rotate the existing blade to a new edge. Be sure the holes in the squeegee blade are aligned with the tabs on the rear squeegee assembly. Reinstall the front squeegee retaining band over the front squeegee and secure the front squeegee band latch. Place the rear squeegee assembly onto the machine and use the mounting knobs to secure the rear squeegee assembly onto your machine. 
reattach the vacuum hose to the rear squeegee assembly. Changing the side squeegees. With the machine stopped on a level surface, set the parking brake and turn off the machine. Open the main brush door and unlatch the side squeegee retaining band. Remove the retaining band from the side squeegee assembly. Pull the old squeegee off of the side squeegee frame assembly and install a new squeegee onto the frame, aligning the holes on the squeegee with the pins on the frame. Reinstall the side squeegee retaining band by hooking the front of the band on the front of the side squeegee frame. Then place it on the side squeegee and secure the retaining latch. Changing the side brush squeegee. With the machine stopped on a level surface with the parking brake set, turn off the machine. Next, remove the clevis pin clip from the side brush squeegee clevis pin and remove the pin from the side brush squeegee frame. Remove the squeegee retainer from the frame and pull the squeegee forward off of the side brush squeegee frame. Clean the squeegee mount assembly and apply a light coat of water and detergent into the grooves of the new squeegee. Slide the new squeegee into the side brush assembly. Finally, reinstall the squeegee retainer, clevis pin, and clevis pin clip. Cleaning with your machine. Before scrubbing with your machine, manually pick up oversized debris, wire, string, twine, or any other debris that could become wrapped around or tangled in the brushes. Plan scrubbing and or sweeping in advance, and try to arrange long runs with minimum stopping and starting. To start scrubbing, start the machine and if necessary, set the scrub mode and settings for the area being cleaned. Press the one step scrub button to start scrubbing. The light on the button turns on and the machine defaults to previously used settings. Note. Do not turn on the FAST system during conventional scrubbing. Conventional cleaning detergents could damage the FAST injector system. If FAST operation is desired, drain, rinse, and refill the solution tank with cool, clean water before operating the FAST system. Release the parking brake and press the propel pedal to begin scrubbing, but for safety, drive slowly on inclines and slippery surfaces. The machine can scrub in both forward or reverse. When operating in reverse, the rear squeegee will raise to prevent damaging the squeegee. Also when traveling in reverse, the optional reverse alarm will sound and the vacuum fan will turn off after a short delay. When traveling in forward again, all scrubbing systems will turn back on. To stop the machine, release the propel pedal and press the brake pedal. As the machine stops, the scrubbing systems stop and begin again when you resume propelling. To stop scrubbing, press the one step scrub button. The light next to the one step scrub button goes off and all scrubbing functions stop after a short delay. Emptying and cleaning the machine. When your hopper or recovery tank are full or when your cleaning is finished, the machine needs to be emptied and cleaned. Position the machine near the debris container and raise the hopper. Place the hopper over the container and press the hopper door open switch. Next, lower the hopper and position the machine near a drain. For safety, before leaving or servicing the machine, stop on a level surface, set the parking brake, and turn off the machine. Place the recovery tank drain hose next to a floor drain. Open the recovery tank drain control valve. Note, the drain control valve handle can be partially set open to control the flow of water from the recovery tank. Lift the recovery tank cover and secure the cover brace. Next, use water to clean the recovery tank. Do not use steam to clean the tanks because excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Warning! Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. If the recovery tank is excessively dirty and are draining slowly due to drain hose blockage, a large expansion plug can be removed from the bottom of the recovery tank, which allows you to completely clean the recovery tank and drain hose. First, place your machine over a large floor drain. Partly raise the hopper. Place the hopper safety support pin in the lower hole. Set the parking brake and turn off the machine. Reach into the recovery tank and lift the handle on the drain plug assembly to loosen it. Lift the drain plug assembly out of the drain hole and place it to the side.
Now you can rinse debris off of the drain plug assembly, away from the drain hose and out of the recovery tank. While rinsing the recovery tank, also rinse off the float sensors. If your machine is equipped with the ES option, also clean the ES filter. Next, install the drain plug and fold the plug assembly handle down to secure it in place. If your machine is equipped with the ES option and it has been used, you will also need to clean the solution tank. To do so, place the solution tank drain hose next to a floor drain. Open the solution tank drain control valve. Again, the valve handle can be moved to adjust the flow of water from the solution tank. Next, you should raise the solution tank covers and rinse out the tank with water. Again, do not use steam to clean the tanks because excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Once both tanks are clean, you can close both drain control valves, restore the drain hoses, and close the tank covers. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments, and following the proper operating procedures for your tenant model M20 Rider Floor Scrubber Sweeper will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment. Again, congratulations on the purchase of your new tenant model M20. Not only will your machine perform well with its highly efficient floor cleaning systems the day you receive it, but for a long time to come, and we're sure you'll be very satisfied with your tenant scrubber sweeper.